Hello my peeps and welcome to What's Up Wednesday. Today is uh, something in April. 5th of April. Um, for those of you who played along with the graphic last week, or those of you who didn't and were just curious to the answer, um, I had asked what was Tracy specific, by the way, hi, it's Tracy, um, on this, like I had taken the, just my Canva, which I love to play in. So you will notice, and, the, and it was very, uh, Laurel was the lucky winner of the stamp set, and she very well explained the uh, Smokey is the, my former career, and even though Birdie Beaver is Alberta's mascot, Smokey's a little more famous. So when I first started forestry school, my dad started calling me Smokey. Um, so I do have some Smokey items. <laughs> and uh, that was my former career as Wildfire Ranger. My current career is as a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and small business owner. And yes, it is 35 years for Stampin' Up! And yes, the paper is shaking. And then this last little picture is uh, my assistant slash reason I don't get as much done as I need to. Rascal. So yes, that was my customized, and my office is nowhere near this meat, let's not kid ourselves. Um, but that was our What's Up Wednesday. So because I have things going on right now, today's uh, today's a video instead of a live. But I, I do plan to get back to the weekly lives. Um, and so today I have a, a bit of a mixed bag for you. Um, we have done three in-person extravaganzas and one virtual extravaganza, which just happened this weekend. And they are so much fun and I love doing them and we have another one planned for the fall for the Christmas extravaganza. But I realized that I never show people what we do at them and I'm uh, quite proud of these projects. So I thought, hey, why don't I share these with people? So th like I said, the next one is in the fall and it's a Christmas extravaganza. So um, the projects would be a different theme to them. Spring, we try to catch a good enough variety of what's coming up to give you. So it's, we do it later than Valentine's Day, so we don't have that. Um, potentially Easter, potentially Mother's Day, Father's Day. Not everybody needs all, or like does stuff for all of those things. Um, I always think spring, new babies, um, maybe you're getting ready for weddings, like whatever will work for you. And, it, and if nothing else, these can always be customized to just be, you know, male, female, baby. You can make them work, kids, whatever. So we'd like a variety in the spring for all the different occasions. So our projects this time were five note cards. And this, this was the, uh, the designer paper from Celebration. And I just realized how small that is. Um, and it is such a bright, fun package of paper. So it was nice and bright and springy. So first off, we made five note cards. Um, the stamp set that came with them has lots of different sentiments, so you can change it out however you needed. These were just kind of samples. Uh, my inner flower child, love that. Um, and like I said, we try to make them so that they work for a bunch of different people if you don't don't want super frilly well there you go and then this one was my favorite I don't know it just looked to me but um <laughs> this one so the idea behind note cards is they're supposed to just kind of be quick and simple you can still mail them you can make a whole bunch of them and have them ready to go uh, and because they're just a little bit smaller than a, a full-size card um, you tend to make them a lot faster unless you're me who puts layers and die cuts and all those other things on them so then we also made a couple cards so we have this version of the card and this version of the card, which they're very similar, just turned it sideways. I think I removed one piece on the Calypso one, uh, but those, and like I said, you can, you can make those work anywhere. I have found myself saying on more than one occasion, I didn't forget your birthday. I'm just stretching out the celebration. So I love that sentiment. Uh, the next two cards, like I said, you could have changed these up. This, this is stamped right on the card, so you got lots of room. So this could have said Happy Easter, um, Happy New Baby, or in this case, You Matter to So Many, which is a quite a nice sentiment too. And then we had this one, which I gotta tell you, I love me a good bunny butt. <laughs> so this is me peeking in from up top. Um, but yeah, just a congratulations card. This could also say, like I said, Easter, whatever. So that was the other card. Oh, these next two cards, this set. Oh, I love these cards. Um, I'll show you about the same time. They're very similar slightly different uh are you a pirate or are you just a nautical dude there you go and these could be again uh, neither one of them actually says father's day on it they could be father's day cards um they could be whatever you need them to be they're just i don't know a little kid who likes a pirate come on happy birthday that'd be awesome and then we also made um little bags where you could put all the stuff in or uh just put a gift in it and give it to them with one of the cards 
So those were the projects from this weekend that I have now spread out all over my desk and made a mess of where I need to show you the next thing. <laughs> so I'm going to move those over. So like I said, we've always got one, basically one extravaganza finishes and we start planning the next one. That's how it works. That's how, that's how much time goes into them. So the next one, we should have enough information about Christmas products and stuff. Um, sometime late July, early August, and then we'll pick a set, start figuring it out, cost whatever. So save the date if you want to come in person. It's 14th of October in beautiful downtown Morville. Um, and then we're looking at doing the virtual one a little bit shorter. We're going to try a little bit different with this one because we've only don't, done one before. We like to, you know, tweak and make things better. So we're going to try, yep, Friday, October 13th. Um, yet to be determined time, but it will be like kind of afternoonish because we're trying to work with the times out east, which is where a lot of our virtual comes from. So just save those dates. 13th October, 14th October. More details to follow early August. Anybody who's been to one of the extravaganzas gets a week early to register. Um, and then we open it up to everybody new just so... Because the people that have been before, that's sort of like a perk. Hey, you come again, you get to... Um, they vote. We've done, like I said, four of them. Um, and they've sold up. So this was a table treat that I had made for the extravaganza. It's just a really simple little basket. Um, and maybe I will... It's not too late, even if you needed these for Easter. Um, I cracked off. I keep saying cracked off. My friend says cracked off, and all of a sudden today I keep saying it. Um, 54 of these in a couple hours. And the hardest, or the, the not hardest, but the most time-consuming part was actually all the flowers. So um, they're really easy to make. But here's the story of the treat holder that I'm going to show you. This was what we made for the extravaganza. Oh my goodness, guys. I get these off Amazon. They are the tiniest, cutest little gummies. <laughs> and then it's Easter, so you know you gotta have eggs, right? So these were the baskets I made. So I thought, well, this is perfect. I found a different chocolate I wanna put in them. I found these chocolate carrots. And what's, what's more perfect, right? The problem is <laughs> you can't see the carrots. So, unless, and, and I do not like the green grass stuff. It, it's right up there with glitter. All over the house, don't like it. So I had to come up, I'm like, well, this is not gonna work. So. My mind flashed back to the diaper fold. Yep, that's what it's called. So this is a treat holder boop, that I'm going to show you tonight. That's called the diaper fold. And it is, I, 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 it's like in my little comment there, I put it's mostly no cut, no glue diaper fold. Because the thing is, you start with a certain size piece of paper. Now, a lot of Stampin' Up's designer paper comes cut six by six, which is how big the piece of paper is to make this. If you happen to be working with the 12 by 12 piece of paper, yes, you're going to have to cut it into four. But you'll see as I go on, there's two other sizes you might need depending on what you're doing. So this is the, the thing I came up with and I'm like, well, this is perfect. I'll make these. So this one has a tea bag and a cookie in it. I thought, nope, this will work perfect for the carrots. Same problem. <laughs> but rather than try to come up with a different diaper fold, I decided that I would make a just a smaller one so I thought well what happens if I cut it five by five instead of six by six and I get this size and again I just decorated this one for Easter and this one has little gummies again they're only about like they're like a centimeter long you probably can't see that in the get the maybe the they're about a centimeter long they're adorable so this made and in this case yes this was the size I wanted right and I'll show you how to make them quickly and I'll show you the final product but so I made this one. So then, because this is how my brain works, I thought, I wonder, could you go smaller than this? Like, what's the smallest one of these you can make? So then I cut a piece four by four. And this just has some fruit candies in it. It just says, thank you. And isn't it adorable? Now, if you were making um, a whole bunch, like you had to give a whole bunch of people just a nice, cute little thank you, this is adorable. Um, if, you, if you want to put a carrot in it, it works, but it fits one or two carrots <laughs> that's it <laughs> uh i figured this is probably the smallest or you're gonna have to start cutting your paper because you'll see when we make it like this point is now reaching right to there and these pieces are going right across um and you'd, you'd have to start trimming things if you made it smaller but six by six five by five five four by four my adorable little trio of diaper folds and they're called that because they do kind of look like a diaper right okay so I'm going to show you how easy this is. Like I said, you might have to, I'm knocking everything over here that you can't see on screen. Um, I quite like the way these candies look in here, so I'm going to put them back in there. Uh, 
go. So I'm doing this just with the six by six piece of paper, the, the biggest piece of paper that I can show you. <clears throat> so yeah, like I said, if you have 12 by 12, you need to cut it into smaller squares. So if, if you're working with 12 by 12, you're gonna get four of these. If you, the middle size, you'd still only get four, you'd just have some leftovers. And then the four by four one, you would get 12 of. Four, six, four, eight, 12. No, you get nine of, sorry. You get nine of out of a, of a 12 by 12 sheet. So that, that also comes into it. So here is how easy these things are to make. Pick your pattern that you want to go on the outside. This is a lovely little checked pattern, but I want that to be on the inside. I love this one. I'm gonna put that on the outside. So our first thing that we wanna do is we wanna fold from this corner to this corner. Okay, now you see how well, like wonky this paper is? Um, I realize that the easiest way to do it is really get your hand on the, where the seam's gonna go and it moves around less. So if we go point to point and then just fold it in half, right? Now I've been making these little diaper fold things. I'm just gonna set this off to the side for a second. I've been making these diaper fold things for years. And every time I go to make them, I do the same thing. I struggle with them the same way. I realize now that I have stuff in my way and I cannot put my, my trimmer on my deck. So stand by while I make a big mess. There we go. So the other day I'm watching a different demonstrator who makes awesome little things. And I'm watching her do her stuff. And she said, let me show you a trick for diagonal folding. Now, you could use this on a trimmer if you have it. If you have the our score table, like the big square scoring table, it works in the top corner there as well. Uh, yep, this piece of paper will work. So here's my same piece of paper, same size. But if you put it in the corner, so anything you have that is like that. So this has a bit of a lip on it, right? I'm not going to show in there. But if you put your paper in the corner, and then you push it to fold, it is so much easier because you're bracing your paper against the corner, plus you're more likely to get a straighter fold. Now in this case, I should have moved that out of the way, but there you go. So, top tip, <laughs> brace your point in a corner and it is a way easier to fold. But nonetheless, doing it on the table was not that hard. You just kind of have to not be scared of, oh, I just put that out there in the middle. I showed you what I was doing, um, right? You just kind of have to be a little more brutal with it. Now, give it a nice little crease. Then we're gonna hold it like this, right? Hello. Hello. Um, and we're just going to fold this point down to the middle. Now, honestly, you probably could measure. You probably could do all sorts of things. I just eyeball it and it's worked every time. So why change what works? Um, okay, so we're just going to fold this down. Now, let me turn the side again. I'm going to hold this up because this line where we just folded is now like where we're aiming for. So if you go like this it, and, and even holding it up, you'll see it's very hard to see the fold lines on DSP. But if you kind of just keep it pointed up a little bit, it tells you where you're going. So this is our fold line that we just made by folding this down. So I'm going to take this side of the paper, basically this point, and I'm just going to bend it so that this line is up against where I just folded. And I'm just going to move that out of the way so I don't bend it, and I'm going to crease it. Now you could leave it, but I find it gets a little bit in the way. I like a nice crease. So I'm just going to push it out of the way temporarily, and I'm going to take this corner, bop, bop, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to fold it up against where I just folded that piece over where my line is. Okay. So I fold it in half. Then I folded this point down so I could have my line. Then I folded one side over. Doesn't matter which order. And I folded the other side over. And I'm just going to tuck this one down. And voila, we're done. <laughs> yep. It is like the easiest, cutest. And look at this. I mean, they're adorable. <laughs> So here's the thing you could if you wanted and if you were gonna if you're gonna be handing these out somewhere and a lot of people were going and touching you could just put a dimensional or a little bit of glue under here and like stick this down because then it is not going to unfold as soon as you put something in it it's very very solidly folded empty yeah this might pop up or whatever but once you put something in it it's pretty solid plus depending how you decorate it you might uh you might end up with like dimensionals or whatever that are holding it down but just like this it will stay and then you can put, I was going to say, where'd my stuff go? You can put your stuff in it. <laughs> um, I suggest decorating it before you fill it. I mean, you might want to test that you can fill it, uh, but I just suggest decorating because then it's flat when you're doing it and you can um, you can get your decorations on better and then just stuff something in it. Um, I'm, I'm looking around my desk frantically thinking, why do I not have anything else? Here, let's try this just to see what happens. Um, 
this was left over from the weekend. This is probably a 10 year old chocolate egg. So whatever, don't ever eat it. I could, it feels heavy. It, feel, it just feels wrong. Um, but you could put something, I was curious if it would work. You could put something round like this in here, but it's not, it's not very stable. It wants to bounce back up. <laughs> but anyways, this is why I suggest decorating it first. Um, you could put a pretty good, a pretty good chunk of treat or, um, put a, like a, a sticky notepad or you could put all sorts of little things in this treat. I'm pretty sure you could put a gift card. Go to my trusty stand over there with the gift cards. Oh, look at how perfectly a gift card fits in there. And then if, I mean, I would stick something in there just to help hold it or you could uh, you don't want to lose the gift card just put like a little glue dot or something behind it but one of these here I'm going to steal from this other basket it's a little treat with a gift card behind it Ta-da! okay so that was the whole the whole point of the thing and in the end and I realized I pushed it over sideways but I'll give you a better look this time the whole reason I wanted to do this was because there was a stamp set that came out during celebration it was like January or February of this year called thanks a bunch with all these carrots and I absolutely loved the sentiment everything's coming up carrots no idea why it's right up there with no one here but uh me and them me and the chickens it doesn't make any sense I just love it so I'm trying not to shake as I show you these things there we go so this is the perfect size for three little carrots to be peeking out enough to see it and yeah, I don't know. I mean, you could give this to, for whatever. Somebody has a great day. Here you go. Everything's coming up carrots. <laughs> um, it's very springish now because I was manhandling everything on my desk. I pushed, I had a set, I had a set of bunny ears. And what did I do with them? That is a good question. Oh, there they are. Um, if you wanted to give these for Easter, you could. Um, and then maybe I should have picked a different color, but you can easily cut. This is a die that makes bunny ears, but if you have a daisy punch or a daisy die, or any kind of oval. You can just make some little ovals and just kind of tuck them in behind and then you've got an Easter Bunny. Oops. I would suggest not dumping them on the table like that, but sometimes that's how things roll. There we go. Get those back in there. We'll take that out because it's just following anyways. Everything's coming up carrots. So there's your easy treat holder, should you wish to. Sometimes you decide on a treat holder and then find candy to fill it. Sometimes you find candy and make it a treat holder that works for it. All right, people, it's a short and sweet one this, today. Um, like I said, things are busy, got lots going on right now, but I uh, I so appreciate you guys tuning in and I wanted to give you a little something that might help you out if you were looking for some cute last minute treats for uh, Easter or whatever. All right, take care everyone. We will see you next time. Thanks.